Under normal circumstances, this would be a pretty erotic story I'm reading, but today I just can't tear myself away. The pictures aren't bad. The woman has a slender body, a perfectionist might say her breasts are starting to sag, but that would just be a nag. The sex was quick, and truth be told, she looks like she's bored in the photos. His eyes were closed, probably thinking of someone sexier than her when they were done. Well, at least he was. They spoke. I'm pretty sure this baby is yours. I just couldn't imagine having his baby. While my husband and I were having sex, I wore a diaphragm. As soon as I started showing, I completely shut it off. He's such a nerd, I don't think he can go to the bathroom without consulting Google. Why did you marry him? In the hope that he turned out to be a good provider, which he does. I just can't take his crap anymore. And when do you plan on leaving him? After the baby is born. His work insurance is too good to give up. He won't like the name I put on the birth certificate, but that's his problem. Are you going to try to get him to pay child support? Why not help? Our state doesn't care at all who the real father is. If you become a husband when the oven door opens, tada, 18 years of child support. You think you'll get the house too? Damn right, plus utilities, cable, and alimony until you and I get married. Not bad, s, huh? And with what he'll give us, I'll be able to spend more time working on my paintings. That woman at the art gallery is telling everyone about my work. You're very talented with a paintbrush. And other things too. Come aboard, lover boy. There were more pictures, more talking, and more disrespect, but the damage was done. I closed the private investigator's report. The woman is my ex-wife, Colleen. The man is the man she works with, Robert Rocky Hackett, who got his degree last year and immediately ruined my marriage. Based on Colleen's comments, it looks like I was the only one who didn't realize from the beginning that my marriage was a sham. My name is Marty Thompson. I wish I could say I'm the most ordinary guy the world has ever seen, but that would be a lie. Growing up in a dysfunctional family, I seem to have learned to harbor my feelings. I can shut out the noise of someone swearing at me. I developed this skill as my mother became more grumpy by the day. My father left when I was 8 years old, and no one seems to know why or wants to lay it out plainly if they do. According to my mother, he was a cheating scumbag. As angry and bitter as she was, I wouldn't blame him for abandoning the family. No matter what I do, my mom always finds fault with it. I don't pay attention to her, and it pisses her off. When I met Colleen, she was a loving and caring person. Unfortunately for me, over time she began to emulate my mother. Because I allowed my mother to belittle me, Colleen decided she could be the dominant partner in our marriage. I am tired of this and am looking for a way to end this joke of a marriage gracefully. I am 28, have been married to Colleen for 6 years, and do not want to start a family again. Colleen is very interested in starting a family, but it will be with someone else. I don't plan on sticking around. I have found a job and will be leaving for the coast in a few weeks without Colleen. Colleen is in her second trimester on family plans, and her belly is bulging out big time. Yeah, I'm a heartless bastard. I would agree with you if she was carrying my baby. She used a diaphragm when we had sex and claims it must not have worked. Our family came out earlier than expected, I assume, and this is just an assumption, that she took out the diaphragm for her lover. The A, aka Rocky Hackett, had his eye on Colleen the day he was hired. Same old cliche, Rocky does it, Rocky likes the way I do it, Rocky and I are working on a project together. And then there are the crickets. Instead of making wild accusations, I opted for the simplest solution. I installed a tape recorder in Colleen's car. One-sided conversations can only tell so much. Sure, he's working on Saturday. No, he leaves to play golf around 8, 10 o'clock then. Okay, love you, just have to listen to your baby's heartbeat. It's so good, maybe he'll kick for you. I love you too. I needed proof and wanted to avoid jail time. She should pay, he should pay, but they weren't worth spending time behind bars. That really sucks. 
I hired an investigator whose report I just read. You have to wait three days to buy a gun. I waited, and now it's loaded with bullets, but I figured that was my backup plan since the spirits of karma made me a winning hand. Halloween is approaching, and there is a big zombie march at the fairgrounds. Colleen and a few of her co-workers decided to compete for the team prize. They held a meeting at our house. At the first meeting, instead of ordering like a servant, I concocted a meaningless task and went shopping. Colleen was furious, as I believe she wanted to impress her friends with how dominant she was. It didn't work out for her, and I found out about it when I got back around midnight. When I was informed of the second meeting, I put the newly purchased video baby monitor on the bookcase and locked myself in my bedroom, watching the monitor. Rocky and Colleen acted like a married couple, touching each other, flirting, and giggling. I listened to how they planned to dress, what makeup Rocky would bring back from China, and how things would unfold. Rocky planned to take a horse trailer and outfit it with a big powerful black lantern. This was to make their glow-in-the-dark makeup look intimidating. The crooks were excited about their plans for how I would be dressed and how I would be treated. Apparently, I was to be grabbed and secured with chains, anything to make me look weak. Although I didn't record this encounter, I did write down some of the things they were going to use. Walking into the kitchen, I stood silently by the beer crate while the planners mapped out the third and final meeting. After going over the cosmetics they were going to use, my attention was drawn to something about the classes they needed to take in college. You remember them from college? Why do I have to take this course? I will never benefit from what I learned from this professor but now a red flag was looming in the back of my mind. I decided to do a little research online. I'm glad I did, Colleen was right in that I do thousands of Google searches when I'm on assignment. I made myself known at the last planning meeting. When your wife is unsure whether to do something or not, the best way to change her mind is to forbid one of the options. Colleen, I firmly believe that using that eye paint is a bad idea. Why haven't you looked at the promotional pictures? I already did the test, and I looked amazing. My eyes will be red, and yours will be yellow. I refuse both the eye paint and the blood cream. I can't let you use them. This sent her into a rage. How dare her dominant spouse speak out against her in front of her friends? Marty, don't you dare tell me what to do. I'm going to do it whether you like it or not. I can't say I didn't try. On the night of the zombie walk, there were five people gathered around my house. Everyone was busy putting on their costumes. Maybe it's just me, but there's something weird about trying to look sexy in the guise of a dead and decomposing corpse. I couldn't suspend my disbelief, so I didn't bother putting on my costume. They were all putting on zombie makeup, lots of gray face paint, fake blisters, and hanging chunks of flesh. Their tattered clothes were store-bought. Why make them when you can buy zombie costumes? I warned everyone not to paint their eyes. Colleen stomped over to me. It's showtime, she said. I turned on the recorder. Marty, get a move on. We have to leave in 15 minutes. I'm not going if you insist on using that eye paint or blood cream. I think it's dangerous. What a wuss. You just spent 40 bucks on a suit I bought for you. Colleen, I firmly believe that using that eye paint is a bad idea. Marty, enough already. I'm going to do it whether you like it or not. Rocky, not waiting for a response, joined in. Look, Marty, if Colleen wants to look awesome as a zombie, just back off. No one asked for your opinion, eh? Are you going to dye your eyes too? Actually, yes. Colleen and I will look great together. I turned to Colleen. Don't you see the risk you're taking? Marty, just walk away. Don't you see that I don't care what you think? Now leave me alone. Colleen, I understand that you and Rocky want to get your eyes painted for the party, but it's dangerous, and I insist on doing it my way. You will not do it. Excuse me? You're telling me what I can and can't do? Exactly. You'll look ridiculous, and it's risky. That's enough. It's not going to happen. 
Really, you own me? What if I say I'm going to go there no matter what you say? Then I won't go to that party with you. So choose, party with me at home or party without me. Colleen ignored me. Then they did it. Colleen and Rocky were still intent on painting their eyes. The other three walked by. All five of them used blood cream. I shuddered. The eye paint and blood cream had been applied generously. Watching their mistake, I had mixed feelings. Their disrespect was about to bite them hard. Colleen acted defiantly. You've given me a very easy choice, Marty. Have fun at home. Rocky, will you take me to the party? Rocky, never missing a chance to praise the girl he was pleasuring, growled, you bet I will. Let's get out of here and have some fun. Goodbye, loser. It was hard to keep from smirking, but I must have done pretty damn well. Colleen might have tripped me as they were leaving. Unfortunately, I wasn't upset at all. They deserved each other. They drove off, dragging the trailer behind them, decorated in an attempt to win some meaningless prize. I turned off the recorder. It was 8 o'clock at night. Black lights are used for decorative and artistic lighting effects. In the back of my mind lingered the thought that my college chemistry class had been about ultraviolet radiation. Who would have thought that a commercial-grade black flashlight could generate waves of high-intensity ultraviolet light capable of causing dangerous chemical reactions? The violet glow comes from phosphorus that triggers a chemical reaction. Until I started doing the research, I didn't realize anything about it. I didn't start looking for information on black lights. There was a warning label on eye paint and blood cream about the dangers of ultraviolet radiation. The packages clearly stated that they should only be used at night and to avoid sources of ultraviolet light. They recommended using only incandescent bulbs with a low wattage tungsten filament. Perhaps that's why Colleen's test was successful. But the lovebirds didn't want to listen to my advice. They didn't need my advice. They didn't take my advice. The problem now is that they can never realize they were wrong. My cell phone rang around 9 p.m. I switched it to messages and then turned it off. Marty, it's Trish. There's something wrong with Colleen. We took both her and Rocky to the trauma center since their eyes are burning. Call me. Maybe a little later, the second half of the soccer game would start, and I had bet on the outcome. I uncorked another cup and ate a handful of crispy veggies. Instead of 10,000 calories in a handful, there were only 9,000. Healthy food and a nice flavor. The next message was about all five of them getting their blisters treated where they used blood cream. I tried to warn them. A buzzing alerted me to another message. Then another. Then another. By the time I checked, there were about a dozen zombie messages. The hospital needed insurance information. That wasn't going to happen. I was told to leave her alone. Maybe she should have gotten her purse. If you're going to be a big girl, you have to prepare like a big girl. At the end of the fourth quarter, my phone rang again. I pressed the red button. Less than a minute later, I had another voicemail. It could wait. After a cascade of belated timeouts, my online bet had migrated to the virtual stack of losing tickets. In TV commercials, everyone always wins. What am I doing wrong? I turned on my voicemail. Marty, it's Trish again. There's really something wrong with Colleen. You should be here. Call me. We're at University Hospital. They won't tell me what's wrong with her, but it's serious. Please call me. Fortress. It wasn't her fault. It's a good thing she refused to use the eye paint. Unfortunately for her, the chemical burns from the blood cream would leave permanent scars. During my time out, I packed several suitcases for the trip. A new job in San Diego was calling me, but I didn't need to stay there for a week. After stuffing my car with my belongings, I drove west on I-70 and overnight in Dillon. My attorney felt that living in another state would help when it came time to determine child support. Knowing I had a long drive ahead of me, 
I had breakfast at Denny's at dawn. I grabbed a grand slam and left with a couple of large servings of coffee. Enjoying the ride, I decided to stop in Mesquite for a bite to eat. Thanks to some unexpected luck at the slot machines, I paid for a three-night stay. Since I had no plans, a few days of flirting and gambling took my mind off the worries at home. I felt bad about leaving my phone on airplane mode, but I suspected the yes had hit the fan. There was no need to get worked up. I spent my free time transcribing the recording on my phone from the night of the zombie walk. I won't say I look like a saint, but it was obvious that Colleen and Rocky had clearly ignored my warnings. Taking advantage of the computers at the hotel, I logged into my email account. My inbox was flooded with emails from Colleen's extended entourage and her family. There were a few emails from my family members that I responded to. On Tuesday, I sent my transcripts to my divorce attorney. He asked Colleen to serve the divorce petition on her house. It was quite possible that someone would have to read it to Colleen. The reason for my warnings was that eye paint, when activated by exposure to ultraviolet light, may cause permanent eye damage. The warning was bolded on the eye paint label and on the blood cream label. The labels were photographed by me. The photos were attached to the transcript of the conversations. The product is illegal to sell in the States but easy to get overseas. Rocky was so proud of himself for finding that thing. Ignorance isn't always bliss, is it? Arrogance can be very costly. Epilogue Colleen and Rocky are legally blind. Both can sense shapes and light, but neither of them can ever enjoy the beautiful smile of their little girl. With any luck, they'll get a cornea transplant. Colleen's parents are caring for her and raising the child. Rocky pays child support. Since I didn't sign the birth certificate and the private investigator's report clearly indicated paternity fraud, I was safe. When the DNA test turned out to be expensive for Rocky, it wasn't my problem. Should I have acted more decisively? Tough question. I never went back from punching them in the face, that's got to be worth something. Sure, I could have sent a pictorial postcard to Colleen, that would be pretty mean. But maybe I'm wrong. After all, she'd have to see the postcards, wouldn't she? As the rules of life demanded, I found a young, single, sex-starved hottie who immediately fell in love and went to bed with me. Yeah, however, there is one nerdy girl at my new job that I seem to be fascinated by. Nerds are like magnets, it's like we repel each other. If you were in this situation, what would you do? I'd love to hear your thoughts, drop a comment and let me know.